What is up my Dexy and Jibakes? Welcome to the Crowder Lake and today is day six of the Gift of Film Fiction, a month long event where I read a winter or holiday themed one shot for the month of December. If you'd like to submit your own one shot, please click the links in the description below. I am advertising this so much in each episode. I know I should have prepared for this beforehand a bit more, but I didn't because we had frozen. And so now I am writing a one shot every day and recording it immediately after and I'm falling so far behind. It helps so much if you just wrote a 500 word little one shot. I know that seems like a lot, but this episode is only 534 words like the story. It, it really isn't that long. It, this morning at breakfast it took me a total of 15 minutes to write, which if it's not a lot you're like, oh then why can't you do it all? I just don't have the ideas. I don't have the creativity. And also, it helps to know what you guys want to see in all this. But if you do want to read the fi fix that I'm writing for this month, there's links in the description to my book of one-shots for the Get to Fan Fiction. With that, I'm going to stop blabbering and let you guys listen to today's story. Blue's Christmas Gift. A Blue's Clues one-shot. Day 6. Blue is getting ready for the holidays, using her paw print to stamp Christmas cards to send out to all her friends. Just then, Steve walked into the room, asking Blue what she wanted for Christmas. Of course, Blue couldn't talk, so she jumped up, stamping her paw to mark a new game of Blue's Clues. She ran off, leaving Steve to find her and solve the mystery. He walked into the kitchen to meet up with Mr. Salt, Mrs. Pepper, and Paprika. They were making Christmas cookies. Before Steve could continue, he needs to put the right colors on the ornaments of the Christmas tree cookies. The first one had red ornaments, the second had blue, and the third had orange. Once walking away from the three trees, Steve found his first clue on the ball of yarn outside of the kitchen. He read it down in his notebook. He then walked over to the playroom, where he caught blue for just a second, skidooing into a nearby book. So, what else can Steve do but follow her? Steve skidooed into the living room scene. They needed help counting marshmallows to put into their hot chocolate. One little kitty wanted four marshmallows that were shaped like squares, and a bulldog wanted a hot chocolate with six marshmallows shaped like triangles. When Steve turned around, he found Blue has already left, but a clue being left on the fireplace. The second clue was fire or warmth. Steve drew a fire in his notebook and continued on his way out of the storybook. Steve walked around a bit more looking for Blue when he came across his own bedroom. There was a noise coming from below the bed. Steve looked under to find two dust bunnies. No, it's my turn, one said. No, it's my turn, Steve furrowed his brow. Hey guys, what seems to be the issue here? The first dust bunny spoke up. It is my turn to play with the toy car, and they're not letting me play with it, the other piped up. But he got to play with it yesterday, and it's my turn. Steve turned to the camera. Hey, friend, what do we do when there is one thing that more than one person wants? A couple ki kids yelled from off screen. Sharing! Steve smiled. That's right. Dust buddies? Why don't you guys share or take turns with the car? Like, one of you can ride the car and the other can push it and you guys can flip. The dust bunnies liked the idea and went about their day. Steve stood up and found the final clue on the bed. Quickly, to the thinking chair! Steve met Blue at the thinking chair as he pulled out the three clues. Some yarn, warmth, and a bed. Soon, Steve put together that Blue wanted a blanket to keep warm while in bed. So, later on that day, Steve went to the shop and got a pretty yellow blanket for Blue to use. He knew she would love it. When Blue got it, she did love it and curled up in it immediately. They were so grateful that they were able to figure out today's game of Blue's Clues. And they couldn't have done it without you. Thanks, friend. Thank you all so much for listening. I'm not going to make this rant really long again, but, like, please contribute your own one-shots if you'd like to. I'd really appreciate it. There's also, also links to things in the description, such as my Etsy shop, where you could buy certain things for Christmas, and I'd appreciate if you did. Like, all the beaded stuff you make me, 
you ha watch me make for Art Mondays, those are down there, and links to my social medias, including the channel Discord, where you could go ahead and talk to other Ducks and Drakes. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and much like Steve trying to put together Blue's Clues, do your best.